Hello, we are back with the Bubble 2 iOS native uh, live stream that we've been talking about for quite some time now. <laughs> so, it's about time, right? <laughs> yeah, thanks everyone for being patient. Uh, we know that a lot of people wanted this content. A lot of people have bubble apps that they want to make iOS native, which is awesome. We did the, we've been doing the Android Studio one quite a bit. And um, now we're finally going to go to the other side and do... The dark side? The dark side. I don't know which one is the dark side. Which one is worse? I don't <laughs> which know. Which one is more of a pain? Uh, I don't know. I, in certain respects, I think the app, uh, the iOS side is easier, but I definitely think the Apple App Store part of of it is... Yes. They like to reject you. To get it through a store, definitely it's tougher through Apple than yeah. it is Android. Android Studio lets a lot, lets a lot through. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. So Jose is going to take us through the steps on how to make your bubble application mobile native and installable on a on any Apple device. Um, we're going to use Xcode and JSONet. It's very similar to how we did it in the Android Studio version. Um, and just a quick interruption, John. Uh, yeah. Make sure that it's JSONet iOS because there are two. Okay. Yeah, I, I still. I guess I could still just use all the same links we've been using, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like all of those still apply because the the iOS JSONet uh, wrapper is right underneath the uh, right Android Studio one. So just don't use certain of the links that we use for Android because they're not applicable. Yeah, yeah. I'll be careful of that, uh, but yeah. I'm still going to drop them in, not all at once, but kind of at the right time. Okay, sounds good. All right, so when you're ready, you can share your screen and we'll get started. Okay, so, all right, so let me start sharing. Uh, first thing I'm going to show you is how to set up your project on your device. So what I normally do, obviously, after I've downloaded JSONet, uh, it comes in a zip format and I unzip it. And this is my master folder that I'll copy and paste into any project that I do. And I'm putting so, that link to JSONet where you can download that zip file. Uh, I just put that into the chat. Okay, good. All right, so now I've created a project for Payhouse Landing. That's us. And then all I did was just Wait, copy. Let, let me stop you for a second. Uh, sure. We're seeing Jose Mello has started screen sharing, but nothing is actually showing up. Can you try stopping and starting again? Sure. Let me see what happened here. Because it is highlighted like it's sharing. Okay, let's try this again. How about now, what are you seeing? Same thing, Jose has started screen sharing. It's just a But black. nothing displaying. No, it's just a black screen with that text in the middle. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, well, okay. You know what? Let me try this then. Let me close out that finder and open up a new one and see if that makes a difference. I'll just double click here. Okay, let me share that one again. Any better? <laughs> Same thing. We literally just did this. It's so funny. It will probably one from one second to another. We have a technical issue. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay. Let me try a different window and see if it, if it's ac across the board. Okay. Let me try showing the uh, virtual device. I was going to show it anyway eventually. Are you seeing the virtual yes, device? Yes, virtual device is there. Okay. We can see there's no Payhouse app there. Right. Uh, let's flip back to sharing. Okay. Anything? Files. Yep, we got your file structure there. Okay, good. I don't know what happened there. Anyway. All right, so like we were saying, I happen to have the master Xcode projects folder on my desktop. 
And inside of that, I created a project for, for, for tonight, Pay House Landing. And what I did is I unzipped Jason it, and it zips, and this is the unzipped version, and I copy and paste it in here. I've also already got some other info that I need, like, like the URL that we need and the icons that we need. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you got some pre-saved files kind of ready to go. Right. All of these are going to be necessary. Uh, this is the uh, zip version. Okay. So I already showed you that there is no app on the virtual device. So I think we're just going to go right into go uh, Xcode and show you where we need to make changes. Cool. All right, let's go there. Okay, here we go. Nice. All right, so, good Good display? Yep, we're seeing the signing and capabilities tab. Okay, so that's the first one I wanted to show you uh, because there's a couple of changes that you have to make here, like the bundle identifier. And I usually go to the all tab on the signings and capabilities okay. and automatically manage signing. Now you also have to create a team and this is something that you're going to have to do in the developer's site. You have to set up a developer's uh, account, Apple developer. This is not something you actually create in Xcode. Interesting. Okay. And you can't move forward if you don't do that. It's not going to let you compile. It actually gives you an error. Uh, it won't, it won't go through. It won't build. Gotcha. Yeah. I was getting errors earlier today. All right. And then you can change the bundle identifier. This is the unique identifier that the app store will use to identify your app. And it's like a reverse domain, uh, naming convention. Same thing with Android studio. Or yeah. The that. same idea. Mm -hmm. All right. So. To get to even get this to work, you have to sign into your Apple ID through Xcode. So again, I'm going to open up another window and then I'm going to have to share that one. Right. And See, all of these little things, I think, are what add up to a lot of time in the beginning. If you don't know that you need to do those things, you know, right, it, it kind of just, just gets stuck and you're not sure why you're stuck. Right. There's a lot of nuances. It looks pretty straightforward, but to get through each step, it's not only always one step. If you know what to do, it's right. easy if you don't. Yeah. Uh. All right. So here it is. This is the window that opens up. Okay. So if you were to go to X, your top menu bar, which is off screen now, it would be Xcode preferences. And then you would go to accounts right here, as you can see, and you would log in. Gotcha. And that's okay. the Apple I developer ID that you, uh, team that you were just telling yeah. us about, right? Well, this is the account and within the, within the account, you, you set up your team and this also allows you to automatically sign your app as Ooh. opposed to manually signing it. Cool. So there's a lot behind the scenes that you really should do research on that, especially when it involves the app store. Getting through Xcode and getting the app on uh, going is not the worst part. <laughs> right. So it's getting it's getting it through the app store. Yeah. All right. So let me share Xcode again. There we go. Okay. All right. So we took care of that. And normally, once you change this here, it'll be under your debug, and it will be under your release. Okay. All right, now the file that we need to start changing is settings P list, which is pretty straightforward. All you really need to do is change the URL that your website is pointing to where it resides. And this is where John is going to show you in bubble where to get that URL. I've already got it pre-populated. All right, perfect. So let me, let, I'm going to just cover me, over the screen, but let me just explain what, what's on the screen right here. So yeah, we are looking at Xcode, like Jose said, and when you've already imported the JSONet files, you'll get uh, a JSONet zip folder file. You'll get all of these files on the left page here. Hi, right, John. 
I'm yeah. sorry. I, I got to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. I really should have shown how to even start the project. I totally skipped that one. You want to go back to that? Yeah, I'll, I'm going to show it quickly because it's really about navigating. Okay. 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 So sorry about that. Go for it. But, but I want to make sure I want to show that. Okay. So we go to here. And yeah, uh, here we go. Jason at iOS master. So that's, the, your... that, that's the zip file that you just like take down, take from the link that I put in, right? Jason yeah, from here. Master. Zip file. This is copy and pasted into the the root folder. Okay. And that's where I navigate. Then you go into Xcode. And then you see right here. Mm hmm you open up workspace. So you double click on workspace. Gotcha. That's where you start your project and it will automatically open up Xcode for you. Okay. That's what you wanted to show. Right. That's important. So, so, How do you get to this point? So open up Xcode from the file structure is your point. Right. I'll go through it one time quickly, just to, so you see the, uh, the path. Jason at master Xcode. Pro, uh, workspace. Okay. All right. All right. That seems easy enough. All right. All right. So let's stop sharing. You go back to Xcode. So now, once you click that, it would have opened up Xcode, and you'll wind up back where you were. So the only sure. thing, the only thing that I wanted to explain was like the the files that you have open or available on the left the left panel here because you opened it up with you know opened up that project. Right. Okay. Gotcha. All right, so let me show you, like Jose was saying, how to get this URL. This is the, the URL on AWS. So your bubble application uh, lives on an AWS server, and this is the location of your particular app. So I'm going to show you how to, how to get this URL. So if I go into, if you're in bubble and you're on a paid account, and you go to the settings tab here, and go to the SEO meta tags tab of the settings and scroll all the way down to the last thing hosting files in the root directory. What you'll be able to do is upload the wrapper and you'll find the wrapper actually maybe I should put that in the chat now. Uh, While you're not talking John adjust your camera because you keep cutting your face off a little bit. How about Because you're, you're off center. How about that? That's better. That's better? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, take this, uh, I'm putting this into the chat, and this is where you'll find the JSON file that you'll need to, it, the file that we're going to be uploading here. And it looks like this. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Very simple, uh, and all you what you're going to do is just put your the app uh, URL here, all right? So you just copy and paste right. If it's the if it's the the default name, it's going to be the name of your app dot bubble apps dot io. If you have a custom domain like I do, my custom domain is payhouse dot co, you would put that in there. All right. Now, once you upload that file into Bubble, right? So that's the that that was the the uh, Notepad, and you can call this Bubble Wrapper. And you upload the file. Uh, let's see where I save this. Android Studio live stream, Payhouse Wrapper. Okay, you'll see, and then you save it. And then when you click on C here, this is the URL that he needs to enter into Xcode, so, right? So you'll notice that here, if you just copy this, you paste it into this spot that's right here in Xcode, URL string. And that's it. That's all you need to do in Bubble to expose the root URL for your app. All right, so we're back on Xcode now. You're seeing my screen? Yep. Okay, like I said, it's the file settings.plist, and I purposely open up the file structure so you can see where it lives. 
So you can see it's right here, or you could actually search it using the search feature right here. And here's the URL. You just go to that line and you kind of click in it and it becomes edible. Not edible, edible, editable. Edible. <laughs> <You need it>. <laughs> <laughs> Next file we need to change is info P list. And the only thing you're really changing here is the bundle name. We're calling it pay house landing. Okay. That's the only thing that changes here. Okay. Now, next thing we do is your icons. You need to insert the, you could work with the default ones that come in with JSON it, but obviously they're not going to be usable for your application, but just for, to get started, to test a little bit, you don't really have to worry about this too much, but we wanted to show you how to actually insert it in here. Now, let me go to a, the, uh, finder again and show you the files that I have saved for that. And while I'm switching over, John, why don't you explain about the, uh, the applications that we use to generate the, uh, the icons? Oh, okay. See the ones that I have, I'm hoping that they do, um, iOS as well. Oh yeah, it does. App, yeah. You, you, you sent it to me. You sent it to me and it worked out great. Oh, that was the one they use. All right, sweet. Yeah. That's uh, what the, that's what's here. Okay, cool. So let me put that into the chat and you can, I, I recommend this one because I mean, it, there was a few that we tried first that just didn't really work very well. The, the, the icons weren't, weren't sized right. And they, they honestly, I think we, a couple of them, we couldn't even run. We couldn't, it actually gave us errors because it didn't like the way the file structure was done. Yeah, yeah. So the apicon.co one that I just put into the chat works pretty well. I would use that for uh, for the Apple icons. For Android Studio, I have a different one that I like. Well, that also generates Android. Oh, it did that too? Oh, it yeah, did. You, you sent me both. They're both zip. You unzip them. You can use it for either one. So even better. That means that yeah. we only need that one now, right? Yep. All right, cool. All right, as you can see, it, it, are you seeing the uh, finder? We're seeing, seeing the files. Yep. File. Okay. So, uh, what John sent me was this zip uh, file, I, I icons, and then I extracted it. Obviously, it's here. And the only thing you need to do is open that up, and this folder asset Xcode assets. You can should be able to drag it from the finder right to Xcode where you saw all the icons. If you can't do that, you can navigate to where it needs to go. Okay. So that would be Xcode, pay house, oops, sorry. Uh, where is it? Config. And media x assets and there's a folder that you you could just drop it in here or drag it into the editor in xcode and it'll save to... it there if you do it right okay gotcha the reason why i say you could do it either way is because i was it was giving me a little bit of problems sometimes it'll work if you just drag it and drop it into xcode so the safest way i found is just really to copy it from the unzip folder right into media x axis cool and it populated everything okay so let me switch over there see and this is what you would see if you could just drag it let me see if it even lets me see i'm dragging it i'll see if it actually takes it no it went right back. See, this time it doesn't work. Anyway, to, honestly, this is all you need to actually get it running. Ooh, okay. That is it. If I, oh, you do have to select a device to run it on, a virtual device. And as you can see, it comes with different devices. You didn't install those? Those were already there? No, in, uh, this version of it came with it already in there. Oh, cool. Yeah. And just to let you know which version I have in here, 
Hang on a second. Which version of Xcode he's talking about? Right, 12.3 is what I have installed. 12.3, gotcha. Yeah. So now, once I've selected the device, iPhone 11, and, and we hit the run button. And I'm gonna switch over to the virtual device that I actually showed you before. We should see it now with the app installed. And already running, that's how quick it is. Whoa. See? Better than that two hours it used to take us. <laughs> yeah. This is the site, the landing page that you set up, John. Right, so this is our website coming through as a mobile native device on iOS. Yeah. Which is awesome. Like this is what you like this is what you would do to upload it to Apple App Store. Like you wouldn't you probably wouldn't upload your website like we're doing here. We're just using this as an example. And it is mobile like the site is mobile responsive too. So if you're using Bubble, you don't you know, you wanna make sure that the site is responsive if you're gonna do this. It doesn't like like this process won't do that for you. You gotta set up your responsive settings first. But you have that you can see that you can run it on a a uh, virtual device pretty easily. That that like if we weren't explaining it, that probably wouldn't have taken more than like five or ten minutes to do. Right. Yeah. It, it's really quick. Once you 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 do it a couple of times, you get used to it real easy. Yeah. And just as an added bonus, while you were talking, I decided to run it on an iPad, and that's ready. Oh, let's take a look at that. Yep. Yeah, I'm going to show you. Uh, there you are. Okay. See? Nice. Are you, are you seeing it? Yeah, that actually looks, that looks pretty good. Even the uh, responsive settings on that look pretty See? good. Yeah. And I just flipped the orientation. See? Very nice. Go to one of the other pages. I'm just curious to see how they look on an iPad. Because I didn't really design the site for an iPad. I feel like I ignored those oh. settings. That looks good. Click on one of the clients. Click on like, uh, click on B&B. Okay. Oh, it's missing the pictures though. Yeah. There's a yeah. couple, there's a couple of responsive things that I got to fix on the site. Yeah. But the point is that it does work uh, whether it's laid out exactly. I mean, obviously, you can work on that. That's not a problem. Yeah, that's that's more bubble stuff. That's not really what we're doing tonight. I was just curious. Yeah. Yo, Will. Will is here. What's up, Will? <laughs> Will from uh, uh Aussie com coming at us in Sydney. Yeah. I'm glad he's finally here. <laughs> he came last time, but we uh, were having the internet trouble. Okay. Um, All right. So let's move on to changing the name of the app uh, and let me explain that let's go back to xcode now normally over here everything is going to show jsonet because that is what you that's what you uh installed when you copied it in there so I already changed it to Payhouse just to test it. So I want to make sure that the process that I figured out works again. So I'm just going to change everything to Payhouse too. So you, we need to change it here, here, and here. Let me change this back over here. Okay. All right, let's make sure we do this right. Let's call this Payhouse 2. Chris says it, it, we're making it look like magic. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I like magic. All right, now we go here. Change that to Payhouse 2. And you do have to be patient on this one because this is the actual project that where all this is, signing capabilities, resource stacks build settings, that's everything in there. So when you hit enter, you gotta wait up. Yep, you gotta wait for this. Sometimes it's a little slower because it's telling you what it's going to change. 
So now you rename it and it's done it. So now the last piece is right here. So now, okay. So you see payhouse two, payhouse two? The last payhouse two you want to change is that top. Uh, right, top the folder, right, what's called a scheme. Okay. And you click on it, let me go back. You click on it and then you manage scheme and you scroll down. Uh, where's payhouse? Am I missing it? Oh, there it is. You click on it and then hit enter. And you see, now you can change it. Okay. And, and close. You, and you want to have that consistent naming across the board? I sure. Yeah, okay. Yes. I'm sure, I'm sure that'll, that'll cause a reject from Apple. If well, this is, so. this, no, this is more for your purposes, the folder structure, right? It's more an internal thing because you want to be able to identify the structure, what the uh, project name is. What if you mix up folder uh, root folders? It's just not a good way of doing it, not having the same naming convention all the way around. Now to test this, what we have to do is let's run it and see if it actually runs. Okay. See if it took the changes properly. So let's go back to iPhone 11 and hit play. And what will we see differently? Just that it says pay house too? Nothing, nothing different. This is really make sure that the changes went through properly and I didn't screw something up. Gotcha. Because it didn't actually take the change. So what would have been the default name if... Um... Jason Ed. Oh, it would have been Jason Ed, okay. Yeah. So you change it to pay house and then you change it to pay house too. Yeah. So now if we switch over to the iPhone 11, you'll see that it actually already ran and it opened up the application. All right, while you're showing that, if, if you have any questions, throw them into the chat if you're viewing. And we'll, because we're pretty, I think we're pretty close to finished with, uh, you know, what we wanted to show today. We can go. Yeah, the only other thing we were going to show really was how to generate an IPA, not the beer, mm -hmm. uh, but the, um, the, file that you would distribute to end users before going to the app store doing testing that you can actually send it to them and they can install it on their phone and this way they can run it and right. you can do some beta testing the dot api file the equivalent of the apk for android studio right now as you can see it opened up the iphone 11 because previously we were running it on the ipad and I, I purposely did that so you can see that it actually is different. So double click on it and the app is running. Okay. And, and change by changing the name. I mean, there's one last thing we could sh kind of sh do if you want, John, to show that it really does, it, the change actually did work. Yeah. Is we can change the name from Payhouse Landing, but I think this is good. Yeah, I think uh, we trust you. I want to try to keep this under a half hour so it saves me some video editing time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. La you're lazy. Yeah, yeah, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll take it because the, the editing stuff out takes quite a bit of time. So unless unless there's any unless there's any questions, I think we're good here. Maybe we can dig a little bit deeper next week too. If there's, but th these are like the main steps that you need, right? Like this yeah. is what most people need it's really if i if i go back let me go back to xcode and kind of summarize really what you need to change really it's here you have the settings p let oops boop, 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 boop. and p let Oh, I see what happened here. Let me do this. No problem, Chris. I'm glad. I think I, I think I saw you on Twitter too. So I'll let you, uh, I'll send you the link once we upload it to YouTube. Uh, uh, settings, fields, and followers. Okay. So basically it's these four areas that we need to work with. Changing the application name, the bundle name right here. 
loading your icons, setting up your uh, your Apple developer account, tongue twisters for me. That's why I hesitated. And then within that, you set up your team. And then you also have to log in through Xcode, going through preferences and, and accounts, log into your Apple ID this way. It, it'll do the self signing. And then the settings P list, which is where you change the URL. That's it. That's really it. Those are the only three places that you really need to worry Four. about. Four places. You need yeah. to worry about changing stuff, all right? Yeah, that, I mean, there's other settings that you're going to play around with depending on your application, but there's no point in going over that because that's uh, app specific. Right on. All yeah. right, so let's wrap it up. Um, uh, remember, one last thing that we wanted to do, we wanted to show them how to generate the, uh, the IPA. Oh, how yes. to do that. Okay. Right. All right, so the, what you have to do here is change this to any iOS device, it will not build if you put a specific device there, okay? So on the top menu bar, which is off screen now, you go to product and build, I mean archive, I'm sorry. I wish I could show that. I gotta figure that out, how that works. But you can see it's archiving. Yeah, we can see it at the top. And once I get the pop-up, that's when I'll switch over to show you what it does. Obviously, you, you could clean up some of the uh, warnings as long as there is not too many. Uh, otherwise, it gets the, the uh, bundle gets too big. Right. It's too many. So that, that again, we're, we're creating a .ipa file, which is what you would use to distribute the application to individuals or upload it to Apple App Store. That's the no, action. no, no, That's not this. No, okay. not the IPA. You have to create a, a separate bundle when you need to send it to the App Store. Okay. I'm going to show you quickly. It doesn't take long. Separate bundle. To... Okay. Are you seeing archives? Yep. Okay, you see the one we just generated? Yes. All right, so the only thing you would do is distribute app. Now this is where you make the decision what you're gonna do. Holy crap, that's it? That's all it is? Right, but there's steps after this, which I'm not gonna go through because it's it's, it's a whole nother uh, session really. Okay. But in this case, you would use development, distribute to members of your team. Next. Okay. IPA processing fail. Oh, because it's not the bundle like you were just saying. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got you. Got you. Got you. Got you. All right. But this is where it would start as long as everything was set up in your app store. Okay. All right. All right. We're good with that? Yeah, I think so. All right. Awesome. Um, Hopefully that's helpful for everybody. Uh, again, we're gonna upload this to YouTube. We're gonna do this type of content every Thursday. So we'll probably alternate now between Android Studio and Xcode. I think that'll be interesting for everybody. Um, and you know, maybe we'll just do different parts of it for different weeks. But if you liked what you saw, subscribe to us on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash bubblehack and uh that's it i guess right yep yeah. that is it every we'll do this every thursday at 7 p.m eastern time so thanks for joining us and if you don't have any questions we're going to sign off all right just stay on uh once we're done john okay i'm going to stop recording though okay